Christian Church, its staff or management. This is the time when we open up the doors to you and we let them in. When you're up, when you're down, when you're bound, Good morning. I am Pastor Dan Walker. I am privileged to pastor the New Bethel Baptist Church in Framingham, Mass. And welcome to Sound Travels. We have a lot of things to discuss today. We have a lot of stuff on our plate, as they would say. And I'm hoping that we get enough time to get through it all. Um, wow, it's such a busy week. Starting my Facebook there. And for some reason, I'm not seeing me because the camera's in the wrong direction there we go that was the thing that i oh for crying out loud uh, that was the thing that uh i didn't uh i didn't see when i was facebook when you start facebook it doesn't have the it doesn't have the um you can't see what's going on at the same time until you hit go live then I can see that the screen is in the wrong position it's pointed away from me there we go oh boy always you, you gotta love live radio live TV folks there's always something that can go wrong so here we are and what a weekend it has been we did a live sound at the light of empowerment uh, center over on Washington Street this past weekend and you know, being a sound engineer, a sound technician, I, I have always tried to tell you about the gigs, what went right, what went wrong, and how we were able to overcome the situations. Um, this past weekend was an exercise in old school over new school. Uh, for some reason, my, my Personas digital fancy smancy console decided that not only was it not going to work, it was going to half work and make a loud noise when it stopped working. <laughs> so, hang on a second here. Let's get to our morning caller. Hopefully it's mom. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Pastor Dan. Wow. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Sound Travels is pleased to present to some and introduce to others Mother Ann Parrish with Mom's Corner. Hi, Mom. Well, good morning. How are you? We're doing good. We're doing good. It, 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 I was just about to, to launch into some of the technical stuff that went on over the weekend. Uh, so you know that this month of April, August has been kind of devoted to men and men's issues with the church. Yes. So what have you got prepared for us this morning? Or should I just start asking you a bunch of questions? <laughs> well, why don't we just let's do the question and answer Sometimes so, that comes out better. That way, the Spirit of God what is able to uh, say what needs to be said to give encouragement, to uplift, to enlighten. I like it. So uh, I think I've asked you this on, the, on occasion. Uh, so I'm going to ask it again. As a mother of the church, as a woman who has spent many years in the church and many years watching men in the church, if you had to tell a young man in the, coming into the church. So he, this is not an old deacon who's been sitting on the same pew for 87 years, and when okay. he finally goes home, they're going to take the pew up, cut it up, and put it in the box with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, you have to talk to a young man who's coming into the church. As a mother, what would you tell him? First thing <laughs> is to get in your word, naturally. Uh, be faithful and then figure out what your hands can do to further the kingdom of God. Don't just sit idle because you will feel better about your walk with God. You will, this will help you to grow and then you can be a blessing and we all want to bless each other some, some type of way. But if you begin to do that, get in the word, uh, do your, don't never stop praying, never stop, uh, never stop reading your word, but then find something, if it's no more than pastor once a week, I'm going to come in the church and I'm going to wipe down the walls. Uh, once a week, I'm going to come in the church and I'm going to paint the outside, paint a door, but and then one thing it'll make you feel good that you are helping the kingdom of God. And so this will uplift you and will keep you from ending up uh, in your older age of just sitting there doing nothing because you will have always done something and you will always find something to do. Wow. So that's, I find it very interesting that your first point of reference, of course, was to have him be sure he understands his word, le read, study, and just be sure that he's, he's deeply rooted in the word. And then you put him to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and not, not, not good, not, not up in front of everybody else work, but actual work work, you right. know, painting the walls, vacuuming the floors. Uh, sir, yes. and, and I yes. think that's excellent. I think that's, uh, once again, oh, wow, this, this is why God has me do this stuff, because that was exactly the right thing to tell him. All yes. right, now, he's in there, he's been doing that, and he feels, I said he feels, so I'm kind of setting you up okay. a little bit, that he wants to go higher. Okay. <laughs> so, phase one, come in, study your word and begin to clean and work in the church in, in, in a menial task. Phase two. Okay. That's the question for you. Phase two. Oh, phase, phase two. Yes. Okay, now I've decided. Okay, he's decided. He's decided. <laughs> he's decided, okay, that I want to do more. Wonderful. Now, before you go higher, you have to go lower. Fall on your face. Uh, that, oh, and that 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 a preach right there. Before you get up, you must get down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some pastor somewhere this Sunday is going to be preaching that sermon. Before you get up, you must get down. <laughs> That's right. Fall on your face and stay there. And Lord, what would you have me to do for you? This is what I want to do. And there's nothing wrong with telling God that, because God just smiles and say, oh, sometimes he'll say, oh, that's good. Yeah, I can use you there. Oh, boy. And then sometimes he says, no, here, let me redirect you. Right. But on your face before the Lord, you can hear his direction. And you know this is, anyway. uh, and I'm, I'm just going to tell him. I'm going to tell him myself a little bit. People, she is telling. She is telling you what she has told me for eons. Whenever I used to come to her with some of my great ideas about how I was going, I was going to help the ministry, and I see this, and I see the vision of all of that. This is exactly the advice, after she got finished with some of the longest horse laughs you ever want to hear, uh, <laughs> this is what she would say to me. Have you consulted God? Have you talked to God? What does God say about this? Are you sure this is God you're hearing <laughs> and not? <laughs> and sometimes I would say to her, well, yes, Mom, of course I've talked to God because uh, 
I am, you know, a, a loyal servant, and I definitely want to know that God is with me and doing this, and of course I've talked to God, and I ain't a bit more talked to God than the man in the moon, but... And what happened? Well, you fall flat on your face. <laughs> All right, you're, you're back in the position I told you to start out which with. Is where you, which is where, on your face. Right, which is where you should have started out in the first beginning. You should have started out on your face, but don't worry. God has a way of bringing you back to your face. Good morning. Right. Uh, we got a bunch of people watching on Facebook. Uh, good morning, Sister Brenda is watching. She was at the uh, women's conference. Good morning, Hal. Beautiful. Good morning, oh, okay. Brenda. Uh, let's see who else was there. Phyllis was at the um, Phyllis was at the conference and she's watching. Well, uh, good morning, my dear daughter. Yes. How are you? And Hal Johnson, one of my good brothers, uh, I met him at the biker church. I think he's moved. I think the last I heard, they were living in Florida. But he okay. was he was a very dedicated brother from the biker church, and uh, he he's watching. So very good. Good morning. Good morning, brother Hal. So uh, we are going to get, so right now we're talking with Mother Parish, and we have just a few more minutes of, of that, probably three to four minutes of that. Okay. And, we, uh, and she has said, young men who want to get in the church, first thing you do is you get in your word. Second, you find something in the church that needs to be done that nobody else wants to do, and you do it. And you do it faithfully. And understand right. something, one month is not faithfully. No. Okay. Just so yeah. in case you're wondering, well, how long I got to do this? For pretty much what I tell people in that situation is you have to do it until you stop asking how long you have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it till God says I'm satisfied. With exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah. So not, not that you look at your hand at work and say, woo, listen, I got that completely. I no. done this. Yeah. I because saw, yeah. if you paint one window, you need to paint another one. If yeah. you paint one door, there's another door. So you you keep you keep moving in what God has told you to do until He tells you to do something else. Amen. And how and just said like He yeah. told you to do that? He will tell you to do something else. A a amen and and how brother Hal from is saying I'm watching from Florida <laughs> blessings to you my brother okay I thought that's what had happened you haven't taken that state over yet there brother I'm sure they need you uh, a man uh, the man of God that I know you to be I know they need you um, Hal was an interesting an interesting study in how a real man should act when it comes to situations because Hal's wife is one of those dynamos that just is out there doing everything and and oh my goodness and everybody's looking at it she would probably be um she would probably be priscilla if you had to pick out a, a, a thing where just going out and doing stuff and doing stuff and people and some people would try to look askance at hal like dude like you know maybe you ought to control your life and hal's response would have always been to them if they had enough guts to say it to his face you need to mind your business <laughs> uh, you know, I know what I'm, you know, you, you get your own wife and control your own wife. Let me, you know, mind your business. Okay. And I've always respected that about him because he was a, he's, he's a man of God. He's a secure man of God. And see, what I keep trying to explain to these people, it takes a real man to handle a real woman. So if you, you know, if, you, if somebody's running you, you must not be the man you're supposed to be. Or if you're choosing people that are not equal to you. You know, I, 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 I look at these older men, 50 and 60 years old, dating, quote unquote, dating a 30 year old woman or a 20 year old woman. And then they have the nerve to stand there and tell me, oh, well, we're equal. I'm like, dude, no, you're not. That's your okay. granddaughter. That's another subject for men. No. Yeah. We'll get we'll get to that another time. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's table that one until you another do time. Your man's I, I I agree. Oh, okay. And Hal just texted me. They've been together forty eight years in, uh, together as as husband and wife. Blessings, okay. and I got an invite. Anyway. Uh, so last part of your advice to young men. Okay. So you 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 um. 
You've asked, on your face. He's fallen on your face. You've got a word from the Lord. And now you're okay. ready. Now. this is So this is phase three. And you know, I, let, me, let me tell you, there's always confirmation from the word of God. Oh, say that. <laughs> uh, when God tells you to do a work in the church, you don't just get up and the pastor look, and here you come with a bucket of paint painting the door. Yeah, no. <laughs> now you go to your pastor. Yeah, you go. And you say to him, I've been praying and I've been talking to the Lord. And I, I truly believe the Lord has led me in this direction in his house to do this, that, or the other. Now, you remember, your pastor is always second in command. So if God spoke to you, think he not have already spoken to pastor? Well, that's it, what they don't so understand. So then you go to your pastor and you get confirmation because <clears throat> you may have thought God told you to paint every door fire engine red. <laughs> and pastor would love it a light shade of brown that's soothing and comfortable. Right. And he agrees. Yeah, the Lord did show me, and I think it's wonderful that you've seen the vision also. Uh, but let's paint it a light shade of brown. Because we do not ever, ever want to overstep the man of God because God put him there. And, but there is nothing wrong with going to him and saying, the Lord has showed me that I need I need to be doing this, this, and the, the other. Now, then let the pastor direct you. Not change, but direct you. Because just like God showed you, God will have already showed the pastor. And he was just waiting for you to come on board. And the way you come on board is back on your face. There you back go. in your word. And waiting. Waiting. Not running. Waiting for the answer from God. There you go. So, Mom, as always, this has been great. I love it. So your, your, your response to any man, young or old, in the church is study your word, Pray, ask, seek God, do the work in the church that nobody else wants to do. Do it faithfully and do it with the guidance, approval, and direction of the pastor of the house. Don't yes. ever think that God has given you a vision in God's house over the steward of God's house. Amen. That's not ever going to happen no right? if that's the case i guarantee you you're not listening to god that's i agree a two-headed monster you gotta kill one of the heads say uh, anything with two heads is a monster that's right period you know so yeah. um and and that is for and and you know that is that is exactly how you know um nature works People say, "Well, uh, can I do this? Can I do that?" No, you you can do it, but it's not, it's not nature. It's not biblical. It's not right. You know, you know, God always established order. In yes, there, he was, did. there was order in His creation. There was order in in the in the, how things were to be done, and every time the people of God got out of order, that's when disasters happened. That's true. Amen. Every time. All right, Mom, it's been fun talking with you as always. Uh, do you have any last words? Start the right way, and you will end up the right way. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mother Ann Parrish. She is the mother of St. Paul's Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Clifton Norwood is the pastor in Akron, Ohio. So tune in next week. For another exciting segment of Mother Ann Parish and Mom's Corner. 
Thank you, Mommy. Talk to you later. Bye. Love you. Love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so we have, we got a good start here. Uh, shout out to Walt Cooper of the love of the Gospel Love Tones who was watching. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how to get down to Florida for my visit because I have a personal invite from Hal to come down and hang out. So that's going to be fun. I'm trying to figure out how to get to Tennessee for uh, a family reunion in, um, in, in, in over the Labor Day weekend. I don't know if that's going to happen just yet. I wanted to talk to just a brief section of the technical part. As you know, uh, we did a concert and I started to talk about how the old school won out over the new school. My fancy smancy all digital board decided it was going to act a fool. And so I brought out, I, I never ever go anywhere without my old trusty 1642 analog to the max Mac Mackie board. And thank God, and they say thank God in Greyhound, I had it because. We were able to p throw it into place. Nobody even knew what had gone wrong and, and had to mix old school. No compression, no external EQ, no any, <laughs> no any of the tricks and gates that I'd gotten used to. We had to go back to the old way. Hey, Car hi, Carrie. Carrie is watching on Facebook. Had to go back to the old way and tweak that sound and, and get all the feedback out and just get everything boosted and fun without any effects, without any uh, uh, assistance. So it was kind of fun doing that and, and just remember, that's why I tell people all the time, it's good to learn how to drive on the old 64 uh, Chevy C10. I'm a Ford man and the very first vehicle I learned how to drive, I, I drove on a regular basis was a Chevy C10 pickup with a four speed top loader transmission and the first gear was a grandma gear. So. I tell you what, you have to learn the basics because when stuff goes wrong with the fancy smancy stuff, you have to go back to the basics and your audience and your people can't even know what happened. I didn't complain. I didn't tell anybody what it, well, the, 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 the crew knew what had happened, but we just, we just went through it and made it work and we had some of the best sound that we'd had in a long time. So that was good. So that's how you handle the situation, not to mention there was rain. So when you have rain off and on out, outside, you have to do some things. First of, all, first of all, don't run powered speakers because they can't stand the rain. So you run passives. You put the amplifiers in the, you know, on the stage, under tarps, under everything, and run passives. Uh, the same with the board and, and the setup. It was under a tent. So we had tents up everywhere and we were able to get through when we didn't lose one thing to water damage. Not one thing. Now granted, it was not a deluge. If it was a deluge, we'd have pulled the plug shut down and, and that'd been the end of it. But it was just a light sprinkling every now and again. And when you have situations like that, you can kind of get through it as long as everything is grounded, everything is properly wired, and everything is out of the way. But as soon as, if, the, if the sky had opened up in any way, shape, or form, we'd have shut down in a heartbeat. Because you can't, when the water, when the rain comes in sideways, you're going to destroy all your equipment and that's just not worth it. So that was the technical aspect. And so now we're getting to, you know, we're, we're getting back on our man's thing. But I have a question for you. I have a question for all you people out there. You know, um, one of the things that I want to begin uh, prop, uh, during the month of September, we're going we're gonna to be branching into a new little segment uh, concerning uh, the current events, uh, his, uh, uh, in, in context. In other words, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in Washington, D.C. There's a lot of stuff going on locally that nobody seems to be wanting to talk about. Um, funny how I was walking, I was, I was in South Boston uh, a couple of nights ago at sometime around 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I was just out there watching. Now, people who know Boston know why this what I, what I just said is controversial enough. They understand that what? I, myself, a person of color, was in South Boston, 11, 12, midnight, walking the street, watching what was going on. Now, could that have happened 10 years ago or 15 years ago? It would have not been easy. 
uh, if you if you are walk if you're in Dorchester if you're walking up if you're on Blue Hill Ave, you see people that you've never seen just strolling the streets, families of Caucasian people strolling the streets on Blue Hill Ave, and it, this is un this is nobody's thinking anything of it, and everybody act is acting like this is something new. This is something new, because this it wasn't a time. I recall a time when I, I, I moved up to Boston in 1978. So, this, so my, all of my history in the Boston uh, starts in 1978. So whatever happened before that, all I know is I can just surmise or understand what the history has told us. But I know that when I moved up here, Boston was a very segregated uh, city. They had areas that folk just didn't go. I was told immediately, don't go to South Boston. Don't go to Charlestown. And if you're there, don't be there after dark. I was told immediately that white folk were not welcome on Blue Hill Ave. Well, they were there, but they were, be, they were there for nefarious reasons. And, you know, they were either buying, selling, or a victim. Is <laughs> so, but the city has come around. It, it, is, it has changed 180 degrees. Now, uh, all of this, um, I'll say it this way. All of these, all of this new neighborhood stuff, all the new people who are moving in, uh, it's safe to walk the streets at 11 o'clock at night. It's safe to walk Blue Hill at midnight. Uh, my question becomes, why wasn't that the case 10 years ago? Why is it now safe for everybody to walk Blue Hill Ave at midnight and it wasn't safe 10 years ago. Why, what happened? Why did all of a sudden now it become a, 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 a safe place to be? And the question, the bigger question is, why wasn't it made safe back then? You know, that's the biggest question. That's the question nobody really wants to deal with, I guess, is <coughs> what, has, what has taken place is there's been a lot of new money in these different neighborhoods. Uh, houses are now... The houses that were vacant lots or abandoned are selling for a million dollars on uh, uh, on streets just off of Blue Hill Ave, and maybe even on Blue Hill Ave. And I got news for you: uh, Black Americans are not buying these houses. Uh, just letting you know, because it, uh, uh, it, in that community, they can't afford it. They absolutely can't afford to buy the houses, but the houses are being bought, and now the neighborhood is quote unquote safe. So my question is, why wasn't the neighborhood safe 15 years ago? Why is it now all of a sudden safe? All right, we'll we'll, we'll delve more into that uh, over over time. I have I have a lot more to say on that. Uh, we have a caller. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, it's Flathead Tom. Ah. <laughs> Good morning, Flathead Tom, from the pastor of the Broken Chains Biker Church is calling, and I'm, 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 I know your schedule is busy, so I won't keep you for very long. At least I'll keep you until the show goes off if we can. <laughs> yeah. And last week, we were talking about men, and you said something that I thought opened up a great part of a discussion. You said that there's been a great wussification of men in our society. And... <clears throat> yep. I completely agree with you. I see it on TV all the time. When and, and Homer Simpson was not the beginning of this, uh, but he was certainly the epitome of what I call the new manhood or, or what man is being portrayed as. Uh, here's something else I'd like you to ponder. I was watching a commercial a couple of uh, days ago where... It was, I, I think it was a uh, commercial for Amazon or for some meal service, and they had a heavy set black woman, beautiful, but heavy set, and her man was cooking her, bre her, her dinner for her, and her man was Caucasian. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's actually happening a lot. I, I see in um, al almost every commercial they're using uh, people of different color skins together. And you know, that's no big deal to me. I, I don't really care. But the guys, the guy cooking is still a masculine thing, too. We do a lot of cooking. Uh, and Not oh. just barbecue, but men are some of the best cooks in the world. So, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. 
So, yep. uh, hey, uh, Jeff Church is watching. Good morning, sir. We're waving at him. Carrie, Carrie Keefe is watching. I'm just, uh, I'm just letting you know some of the people on my Facebook page that are that are click, yeah. that are clicked Good in and are watching. Good morning, Roadblock is what I think. Well, Roadblock is yeah, that's right. Uh, Jeff is is I forgot his 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 uh, his road name is Roadblock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know, the the change in how men are presented happened, it started happening very methodically through the 70s, and, and prior to that, men were held in high regard. You know, they, they were presented even on television as leaders of their household, and good leaders, not abusive, you know, jerks, but and somewhere along the line, the men are presented as buffoons and idiots, and that's unfortunate, and then, uh, of course, our culture in america is a fatherless culture divorce or just people getting you know pregnant out of wedlock and guys just disappearing and not taking on their full responsibilities it's a it's a time where the family has been under attack and the structure of the family has been under attack and um unfortunately we as christians have not stood up to it the way that we should uh, as in most things and i'm leaning more militant in my perspective every day because I, I'm tired of seeing this kind of stuff happen when the solution is for men to stand up and take responsibility for their children and take responsibility for their families and take responsibility for their spiritual development. Hang on a second. I got another call. I'm going to see if I can get him to join. Let's say I push this again. That locks you in. Good morning, caller. You're on the air with Pastor Tom. Of the broken yes, chains. Good morning. Good morning. Who am I speaking to, please? This is Sean. Hey, Sean. How are you? Not bad. I have a question. Yes, you do. When will there be a report card done on black leadership to address the lack thereof of opportunities? That's my question. Well, the Thank easiest you. answer is, first of all, we need to identify the black leaders in this community. I can't tell you who... The, I can't tell you who the black leaders are in this community. So if we don't know who they are, how are we going to give them a report card? So I guess he didn't want to stick around and, and ask and, and, and hear the answer. Well, thanks for calling, Sean. But the answer to your question is, who are the black leaders in the community? What is the black community? And more importantly, where are the men of the black community? So, you know... We have advocated, and, and I would agree with you, Pastor Tom, that the issue has, the issue changed when um, we allowed the government to come into our homes and push us out in, in a lot of respects with welfare, with social programs, where it, if, if you were a woman and you wanted to get welfare, your husband couldn't be in the house with you. Yeah, And people don't understand that was directed at all of the lower class communities, both black yep. and white, because it, yeah. uh, undermined the male, it undermined the male role in the house. It turned the government into daddy. Now, there's a problem with that in that a lot of men agreed with it, allowed it to happen and thought they were getting over on the government. I don't know how many people I heard back in the day while growing up, oh, I got to go visit my woman. This is the day for her welfare check. I mean, yeah. what do you mean your woman? Isn't this your wife? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, and you're not living in the house with her? No, if I had to move out. Why would you have to move out? Because if I'm, if I'm living there, they don't give her a welfare check. I, really? And it does put people in desperate and difficult circumstances because the... It, the system is designed to take the men out of the equation, and uh, it does, it, it actually, I think, people put themselves into slavery as a result of this supposed good thing from the government, but they've compromised the family structure in order to get money, and, well, and desperate people do desperate things. It's not, it's not like people wake up one day and say, I think I'd like to be on welfare. It's usually... <coughs> They're just in a desperate situation, and uh, it's hard because when the system is designed to separate the family and pull men out of it, then, of course, what happens? Young men grow up looking for purpose and meaning, and where do they look? They look to gangs. And uh, Just to speak to Sean's uh, question earlier, uh, there are a number of great 
leaders in the area. I, Bishop Thompson is one of the guys that I think of regularly. He's a phenomenal leader in Mattapan, and, and there's there's lots of other uh, great pastors who are trying to make a huge difference. I rarely look to politicians for anything other than promises so that they can fleece their own pockets, but, uh, you know, the, the, past, the local pastors are the boots on the ground. The local churches have men that are standing up. And so, Sean, if, you, if you're looking for real leadership, that would be the place that I would say start, is there are real leaders out there making a real difference that don't get any recognition, because if they did, people would know there's a difference happening. Right. And right now, I think uh, this, this political climate, I have never seen such bias and such deliberate mis, uh, statement of, uh, misstatement of facts and misstatement of information. I've never seen a press that is so geared to the destruction of a government in my life. Not ever. You don't, yeah. you, you don't really have a clue of what's going on. The, 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 are you familiar with the, the weekend broadcast of ICE agents arrest man while he's on it, you know, stopped at a gas station to prevent his wife while she's going to the hospital to have a baby? And, yeah. every, and this was touted by all the major networks, but you never found out that, first of all, the wife was not having a baby. She was scheduled to have a C-section, so it wasn't critical. The second thing, and more importantly, the man that the ICE agents arrest was a wanted convict f uh, 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 charged with under suspicion of murder from Mexico. So it's not yeah. like ICE was looking for this guy to persecute him because he was Hispanic or because he was an illegal alien. The Mexican government gave ICE a... a um, a warrant saying we're looking for this guy because we think he killed somebody in Mexico. Yep. And so when they arrested him, they did their job. But did the news media report it that way? Absolutely, no. absolutely not. I've never seen no, that they before. Found that Tibbetts girl once again in a cornfield. The Tibbetts girl has been missing for a month. Yeah. And uh, who killed her? An illegal, illegal alien. Illegal alien. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's really unfortunate that that kind of stuff doesn't really make the news. And, and, and you know, this is happening at a far greater rate than uh, we're aware of. And, and all countries have borders. All countries have requirements on how you get in and out of their country. Every country in the world has borders. Every, every country in the world. And, you know, the people tell me, oh, no, God didn't, God didn't have borders. God established borders. Absolutely. So... So, and standards. He and every nation has them, and we need to have them for our own protection. Otherwise, it's anarchy. And just, to, and just in case you, and, and the people who are out there going, well, where did God establish borders? When he escorted Adam and Eve out of the garden, he placed cherubims uh, uh, at the gate of the garden to prevent them from anybody from going in it. That, my brother, is a wall. So <laughs> this new... This, this concept, you think Trump did not invent the concept of a wall. President Trump did not invent the concept of a wall. First of all, God did. So yeah. you have a problem with, you know, borders, then you need to be talking to God about it because it is not yeah. something that, but, and, and, and while you're talking about that, uh, who, is, who has even heard of the purging that's going on in South Africa right now? Oh. No, I mean, no. yeah. Because now that, now that it's basically a reverse discrimination, but uh, yeah. white people are being killed and slaughtered and their land taken. And, you know, I'm, I know they made a number of missteps over the years, but uh, certainly the pendulum has swung in another direction, hasn't it? As absolutely. And, no, and you're not hearing about any of this. We're hearing about Amoroso you know, uh, recording in the White House. We're hearing about Stormy Daniels. We're hearing even about Manafort. Now, I wanna, I'll, I'll talk about Manafort next week, but I have some stuff I want to say about that as well. You, you, yep. you know, we, we're hearing about all that. We're, we're not hearing about exactly what men need to be doing. In this, in this recent church scandal, uh, I want to say something about this recent church scandal with more priests being found to have been doing uh, nefarious things with the children. Where are the men 
within the Catholic Church. Why, uh, why haven't the men stood up and said, enough? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a horrible situation and, uh, and a travesty, uh, a horrible reflection on any uh, body of Christ. And, uh, and, and to see the depth that it's gone to, uh, it's frightening that it was allowed for so long. Uh, and those are the things that we men must stand up and protect our children from. But, yeah. you know, I think it's, it was hard a number of years ago to believe that it was even possible that Father so-and-so was doing anything to your kid. Right. Now, of course, everyone is being watched, which we should be. Yeah. You know, we, we should be protecting our children. We should be aware of what's going on around them. And if our children start talking about certain things, we need to deal with it right away. And that's that's part of what I think has been going on in our cultures. Nobody wants to deal with the real issues, just like the news. Nobody wants to take on the real issue. They want to deal with the public health. Right. Right. And we only we only want to deal with just what can, like you said, line our pockets. What can make us more money? What can further our particular political bent? And right now, I think if we're going to survive another generation, I really think the men have to start taking responsibility for their own actions. If you, you know, I, I met a young man over the weekend who said he had 12 kids. And my question to him is, how many of them are you supporting? <laughs> yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. So don't tell me you're a father of 12 kids if you're not supporting that one of them. I'm sorry. Yeah, because you then you're not a father. You're a donor. Because you're not a father. You're just a donor. And you become the problem as opposed to the solution. So now, yeah. now the good news is that this brother is in a situation where he's trying to get himself straight and get him and, and begin to understand that yes, he has been given a great responsibility, and he is and he is attempting to stand up and take responsibility for his actions. So that's the good news. Yeah. The, the bad news is while he's doing all of that, those kids are suffering, still. Yep. So. And it'll be a difficult task because the system is designed to actually put him in jail. Oh yeah. So that that's really that's really unfortunate because. If he tries to do the right thing, he'll either be in jail or broke. To support 12 children, he would never have any money again, and, and he's not allowed to live with any of them. Right. It's a, the system is broken in that regard, and, and he does need to step up and do what's responsible, but it, it, he runs the risk of finding himself in jail as a result. Right. And, you know, right now, it is the, um, I don't know... I guess, I guess, you know, I, I guess it started out, like you said, you, you mentioned the 70s as a time, as I remember while growing up in, the, in the, you know, the deep, dark sections of Cleveland, which I did, I remember how the men used to treat the household. I remember how, you know, whether you liked it or not, they came home. Whether you liked it yep. or not, they were in the house, they, they worked a job, they came home. Yeah, maybe they had a drink or two when they got home, but they came home. They handed the paycheck to the wife. They went and got themselves a, a sip or a nip or whatever you wanted to call it. They'd sit in the living room, watch TV, but you knew where daddy was. And, and, then, yep. wh and then what happened? And then the ones that were standing on the street corner were, were looked down upon. The ones who were doing nefarious things were looked down upon. They were not celebrated. They were not uh, lauded over as a desire. Gangs didn't have a place, a foothold in the old community because they weren't needed. They're not needed now, but now it's a tad late because they had a young man who's trying to find his own identity. He's out there trying to, somebody please tell me I'm a man. Somebody please confirm my manhood. You know, somebody please tell me I matter. So yeah. who's willing to do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it takes, uh, now we're trying to use things like um, uh, making modern nights as a, uh, a book, but also a, a plan on how to raise young men to know that they've achieved manhood. Because in almost every culture around the world, there's a time where you get bar mitzvahed, you have a time where you the tribe accepts you as a man, there's a, there's a time. But in America, there's not really a way to define when are you a man and what does a man look like. Right. Um, 
but raising modern day knights is a is a great plan for that uh, my last pastor uh, did this with all of his boys and they've turned out to be great young men who understand where they fit into things and what their responsibilities are they say you know he says uh, men are not passive in their responsibility correct absolutely you know man is an i, I tell people i used to say man is an action word is a verb a man I means yeah. you're doing something if you're just sitting around contemplating your navel, that's not manhood. You know, I don't, yep. I don't know what or, it is. Or, you know, getting yourself stoned enough to not deal with life, that's not manhood either. That's not manhood either. And, and, and in these times, the, the good news about our current situation in America is that anybody who wants a job right now can have a job. Absolutely. And, 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 and just to support what Pastor Thomas said, the unemployment rate right now is down to three percent i think yeah in, in the black community Unheard of. yeah three percent in the black community like you if you want a job you can get a job yeah it's there yeah. you know and i understand that you may have paper i may understand you may not pass a quarry i get all that but guess what it doesn't mean that you can't get a job you may not be the president of general motors but you certainly can work in General Motors somewhere. Yep. So. Yep. And even with those, you know, issues, whether you've got a federal, uh, uh, whether you've got some federal time on you, or you know, you've done something else, whatever, whatever crimes you may have been busted for, there's still work available. It's, it does make it harder if you get a federal offense. It just, it just does. But that doesn't make it impossible. There's plenty of construction jobs out there that don't care. Um, there's plenty of jobs where uh, when I when we had businesses, I didn't care what your record was. I care what your performance is. And right. There's plenty of small businesses that are right there that they want to see you have a second chance. They want to see you stand up and they'll do what they can to walk with you. The big corporations, they've got some other stuff, you know, that you're going to have to have some hoops you're going to have to jump through. But smaller companies just want to make sure you can pass a drug test and you're willing to work. That's pretty much it, you know. The job starts at yeah. nine. Show up at eight forty-five yeah. and get to it. That's right, <laughs> you know. That's but right. but we but the other part of this is that somewhere along the line, somewhere along the path, men have gotten you have gotten the excuse part built into them, where they get to whine and they get to complain and 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 mm. I, I, I'll tell you what, a whining man would not have survived in my household when I was growing up. Oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in mine either, except yeah. with a lot of bruises. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, <laughs> the, the thing is that when we talk about freedom, God is the author of sovereign freedom. And, and at the end of the day, where our free will decision is to choose Christ, to not choose Christ. God is the author of free will. Victimhood, and I, I deserve better, is from Satan. It's 100% from Satan. You know, oh, well, God must be ripping you off. Oh, God, is that really what God said, Eve? There you go. You're, you're a victim, Eve. You know, Eve, he's holding something back from you. You deserve to eat that fruit. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, our, and, and sovereign freedom takes sovereign responsibility. I can't blame anyone for whatever circumstances I'm in other than myself. And the only way to rise above them is to take responsibility for my actions and now make a difference. Well, talk about just for a second. I and, and one of the uh, t talk about your mission that caused you, or how did how did the biker church, how did Broken Chains Biker Church come to be? Because oh my goodness. Well, we we, we got it's we got like six minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, a number of years ago, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to guess twenty five or thirty years ago, the Lord laid on me an idea. I had actually been to the uh, gospel brunch at the House of Blues. You ever been to the gospel brunch at the House of Blues? I used to do sound. It was for, awesome. I used to do People sound for the gospel brunch at the House of Blues. Singers, <laughs> singers, 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 <laughs> full on Jesus message. All right. And it was rocking. It was a great time. And and I started thinking about we need a gospel and barbecue barn is what we need. We need a <laughs> we need a place that's got barbecue. Yeah. And rock and blues and all that stuff and. You know, God gave me this vision of the gospel and barbecue, and, and not. It was many years later that it came to pass that bikers wanted a church that 
would be good for their children. Um, one guy in particular said, you know, we need a church for people like us because all my kids have ever known is leather and tattoos, and we feel weird in a regular church. And I, I guess if I were to say, you know, bikers really fear nothing but church people. <laughs> church people freak out bikers with all their crazy Ned Flanders church language. And, right. You know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, after quite a bit of prayer, the Lord just laid it on our hearts to start Broken Chains Biker Church, and uh, and it started filling up. I, I, I have to say that the most common question I get is, I'm not a biker, can I come? Yes! Oh, what would Jesus do? Yes, so absolutely! I've been, I've been having to tell people, the so one thing about it is, we don't care if you're not a biker, but just know that we are. And, and if you if you can deal with that, that's great. If you want to come here and change us into Ned Flanders' church, that's not going to work. Right. I'm, I'm grateful that Ned Flanders is saved and he's got his nice church of the nice people. That's not how we roll. Right. So our church is messy. People are broken. People are at various stages of their walk with the Lord. And it's often overwhelming for people to be in an environment uh, of people who are newly saved, and the majority of people at our church are newly saved. Uh, they get saved here, they grow here, and often, you know, move on to other churches and ministries. Praise God for it. So we're a kingdom-building church, and uh, people tune in even to our live uh, Facebook Live broadcast all around the world, actually. And so it's it's been a dramatic impact, something we never expected. And, and God just keeps moving, so we keep doing what he said to do, stay with the mission. And there you have it. You know, And I'll say this, the Biker Church, we, as you know, was the perfect, it's a perfect environment. If you have spent a lifetime in churches and you're broken and you're not quite sure how and what and who, it was, if it wasn't for the Biker Church, I wouldn't be where I am. And I've, I've told him this, I passed, I'm not trying to blow any smoke you know, in his ear or anything, but Pastor Tom knows this. He, I was sent there to learn what I needed to learn so that I could go forward and do the mission that God had set for me, but none of the traditional methods and the traditional churches that I'd ever been in were uh, preparing me for what I ultimately needed to learn. So uh, it, sometimes it's best if you can go to a, a, a church that has a more free, uh, a freer atmosphere with still rooting and grounding, solid rooting and grounding in the Word of God. Amen. So, so that was you know, so. So, please don't take what he's saying lightly. When you go there, know you're going to be around people who, like like you said, look like they they are who they are, and they are unashamedly who they are. And part of who they are are children of God who are striving and seeking and trying to figure out just like you think you are they are just as quote-unquote normal as you would portray yourself to be which should every time you look at somebody and go well, that person's weird well guess what how how do you know they're weird maybe like is recognizing like <laughs> yeah. yeah we're all weird to somebody exactly and at the end of the day we're peculiar people aren't we we're supposed to and, be uh, yeah, we're supposed to be peculiar. Well, Dan, you've all, Pastor Dan, you've always been a blessing to us at Broken Chains, and, and it's been exciting to watch your journey. Uh, and we're, we're glad that you were able to be part of everything God was doing at our current location. And, and uh, I hope that you get to visit us at our new location. <laughs> I know. I was just talking to Eric last week, and he's saying, when you're coming down to the new location, you got to check it out. you got to be there. And I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. It's, <laughs> it's on. Yeah, it's, in your spare time. It, no, I don't have any spare time. I, give an, I, I gave up that concept of spare time so many years ago. Now it's yeah. time I have to book and plan and, and adjust so that I can make it. But I am definitely coming. Uh, well, we were blessed to be the front page uh, news story of the Taunton Gazette last Sunday. Well, so all right. That was uh, an amazing article and really makes you feel welcome to a town when, uh, when they do a full feature piece on you. It, it, was, it was crazy. You should check it out when you can. I would do that. Well, it's 854. Why don't we have you pray us out uh, so we can get ready to go into... Um, Get ready to go into the next the next phase of the of uh, of uh, 
Boston Praise Radio, WLPG, um, WB, WBPG, LP, uh, 1029. So uh, this has been Sound Travels. I am Pastor Dan Walker. I am privileged to pastor the New Bethel Baptist Church with my special guest today, Pastor Tom Iddings of the Broken Chains Biker Church of Taunton, Massachusetts. Pastor, the floor is yours. Jesus, we bless your name. We exalt you forever and ever. We pray, Holy Spirit, you descend on our nation, that you bring revival to our nation. You revive the hearts of our men. You draw us up as men and women united, not divided, but united in vision and purpose in your mighty name, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name forever. Bless the people listening to this radio broadcast and seeking you. Amen. For a party, you're too busy screaming, I'm sorry. Oh my God, why me, why me? I feel the burning heat.